Um, hi everyone, my name is Jacob, and today I'm going to talk about adventures in type safe error handling. Okay, where do we start? Uh, <coughs> oh man, it's not difficult, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to scroll through all the slides. Let's see if I can try to do that. Actually, let's use. All right, we will scroll through all the slides. <laughs> okay, how do we handle errors in Scala today? So, where are we going to start? So, if you're um, if you're just starting out in Scala, you're very soon encountered a type eater, um, which has type two type parameters, um, one on the left side and one on the right side. Uh, traditionally, when we're doing error handling, when we have some process that requires maybe validation or something like that, we use the left side as the, the error type to represent errors. So you can use any, any errors you want. I'm going to get used to scrolling this. You can use any error type you want. And um, so you can use a string if you want to use an error message. You can use a, a class to contain some uh, type information about an error. Or you can use a seal trait, which I use here to represent um, all the possibilities of, of errors. So an example here is that I, I have um, kind of two steps of validation. They might each return a different error. Uh, what a Scala compiler can do for you, because the type is, is covariant on the error type, you, see, you can see a little plus there. Um, Scala compiler can kind of try and find the first common super type between all the error types, and then infer that to be the, the, re the, the resulting error type. So that's quite handy. It's uh, very nice ergonomically. And if you use zero and stuff, you have the same mechanism as well. Now, eaters are, are nice for you know, normal validation of pure, pure uh, logic. But when, you, when you're dealing with side effects, you, you know, if you want to do purely functional programming, you kind of want to be able to represent, represent effects as first class values. And that's where cats, IO, and all the other effect types that you know come in. Now, you see that there's no error type in there. It's just an A, which is represent the, the result of uh, some sort of side effect computation. That's because, uh, in, at least with cats and monarchs as well, any, any I.O. can fail with throwable. So that's, the, that's kind of the, the design of the library. So all you know, all you know is that you can, throw, uh, you can throw an exception. And you can use I.O. race error for that. So when you're using I.O., you kind of have to rely on documentation, you know, just like the good old days in Java where you look at documentation to find out what exceptions can happen. So you chain your stuff together and you have no idea what could go wrong. Not the nicest. So what people started doing is, you know, I know, I'll put either type in I.O. And it works, kind of. Um, so I have two IOs with either in them, and you know, I can use either to represent what could go wrong. Uh, but the problem with, with that is when you're using flat maps on IO, you get the result out, the either out, and then you have to do like the checking on the either, you know, the pattern match on that, um, and and then you know, fail fail fast if it failed, or keep going with the next step if it succeeded. Uh, normally, you write about three steps of these things before you give up and try and find a better solution. And soon you encounter either T from, from cats and scholars there as well. So it's similar to um, an IO eater. You can think of it as a sort of thin wrapper around it. But what it does is it, it short circuits whenever you get a, a left value or error value, as you can see from the error type you have there. Um, so here's an example where I try to chain together two either T's with, oh, actually, that's troublesome. I have, two, I have two different errors, E1 and E2. In the previous examples, they all chain fine, and Scala compiler is able to infer the, the common uh, error type. But I can't do that here with either T. That's because either T is invariant. You can see there's nothing around the E there, um, which means if you, the Scala compiler refuses to, to uh, do any kind of inference. It says, if you have an error type E, I'm going to try and match um, that with another either T with with the same error type. If it can't, then Scala compiler will give you a compile error. <coughs> so what you have to do is you have to kind of manually upcast it to some common error type uh, using left widen. That's one way to do it. 
um, which is a bit more cumbersome, and you have to kind of do this manual, manual um, wiring. I guess. And because either T is just a thin wrapper around I/O, you still have the uh, I/O way of raising errors. So you have, so now you have kind of like a two, two error channels, right? You have the, the type error channel, uh, E, and then you have the throwable way. So what people will normally do, or what people recommend you do, is that if you have some error that um, you don't think the client can realistically handle, for example, maybe our memory error, or you know, um, per perhaps network error, um, or maybe like something that, an invariant that was violated in your logic that shouldn't have happened. In that case, oh, okay, interesting. In that case, you can um, use the IO race error to kind of completely uh, stop the whole execution. Just um, it's, it's essentially the same as throwing an exception. Or if you have um, some business logic and they have some business error, then you can use the type error channel. Just found the oh, excellent. That's good. Cool. Um, next, we have. The bifunctor IO from zero. I have to get used to saying zero instead of ZIO. It's a bit like either T. You know, you can see that the type signature is quite similar. Um, you have an, uh, an error type and you have a success type. But you have better, better ergonomics because now we retain. Come on. Okay, let's try that. Control, come on, F. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the computer doesn't like me today. It's really sad. I tried like two laptops and uh, yeah, it's good. Um, cool. So we re retain our, our ergonomics. We, you know, Scala can automatically um, infer the, the right error type for us, which is pretty awesome. And you have, similar to IO uh, from CATS and Monix, you have a throwaway, throwable way to kind of terminate the whole execution chain for critical errors that you don't think your client can reasonably handle. <coughs> um, I have an empty slide here because uh, I, I need to apologize a little bit. Um, if, if, the next, if this brings up any repressed <laughs> memories, I, I'm really sorry. But I think there's, uh, there's something to talk about there when you talk about uh, check exceptions. So check exceptions, for those that are not familiar, is uh, in Java, a way for you to declare that a particular method can throw an exception. Um, and that will require your, your users, any user of that method or function, to handle <coughs> error. So for example, if I have two methods, each throw a different error, and I, I use them in you know, another method, both of them, and I only handle error one in the example here, uh, you'll see that a compiler will complain if I didn't, hand, if I didn't declare that I can throw an error. <coughs> now, if I want to make sure all my errors are handled so my clients don't have to handle them, um, then I have to handle all the errors and the Java compiler will be happy. So there are a few troubles with uh, Java check exceptions. First of all, it's not available in Scala, which many people will say is a good thing. Um, that's because the errors are actually not values. They are, they're not part of the return value. So there's very limited things you can do. And then in order to handle errors, um, you, you, it doesn't really work well with many other language features, especially newer ones like uh, Java uh, Lambda syntax, the anonymous function syntax. So we try to use it with Java extremes or complete the futures because the, the error, how we declare um, error interface, is locked to the method level. Um, it gets very awkward. And it's a type system special case, so you don't really have a lot of space for abstraction or, or reuse. But I think, you know, Java check exceptions has some very cool ideas that I like. You have exhaust handling, which we get from using seal traits in Scala. It's great. You have partial error handling, which I showed you there before, where I only handle a part one error, and then any error that I didn't handle is, is um, kind of propagated to the caller so that they can handle it. You have an open union of errors. So I can use you know, 10 different methods to handle some of the errors. I don't have to declare that's a seal trait of errors to represent all the possible errors that can happen. You know, the compiler can um, ultimately infer that and tell me, hey, you need to put this there, I put it there, and everyone's happy. The question is, can we have it in Scala? Can we have something like this for, in Scala when it comes to error handling? The first piece of the puzzle is shapeless core products. Um, hands up if you know something about shapeless core products. Excellent. Cool. 
So what is shape plus coprolapse? Uh, it's, a, it's a very th hard thing to define, but I'll try my best. <laughs> so think of um, either types. You have uh, uh, two possibilities, right? The left side and the right side. Uh, you can think of shape plus coproduct as um, um, a nicer way to represent multiple possibilities. So instead of just two, you have, you have a nice way to represent multiple possibilities. So with either, you can do the same by, you know, by nesting either's uh, on the right side to represent um, multiple possibilities and then pet image on them. But as you can see here, it's not, it's not the nicest. Um, so instead, what you can do here with coproducts, you can do you know, E1, column plus column, E2, and then, and then E3. And you end with the C nil. So C nil is kind of like a way to finish the coproduct to say, hey, there's no more possibilities. It's done. So now we have our coproduct type. We can we can create coproduct values, values of the coproduct type. So what do you, how you do that is you take a value, you know, one of the one of the um, possible values, such as e1, and you kind of inject that into the coproduct. Similarly, you can do it with uh, you know an, another member of the coproduct, you say, and inject that in. And because coproducts are are really just case class and seal trait under the hood, you can pattern match on them, and you get the exhaustive checks that Scala gives you. So you can think of I and L and I and R here as left and right values in either. So whenever you have a pattern match on a, a, a left or I and L, you're trying to extract one possible value. If you fail, then you can keep going and try to extract the next value. It's a lot to unpack. So. And coproducts are very powerful and very flexible. So uh, in Shapeless library, it comes with a bunch of type classes that you can use to to um, do a bunch of things with coproducts. For example, um, we're talking about partial handling of errors, right? So um, what you can do with coproducts, for example, you can, you can say, hey, I, I have a coproduct here, a value here. I want to be able to extract one particular value out of it if, it's, if the value actually exists in the coproduct. And you use the remove type class. So I have a remove type class instance that says, uh, e I, have, I want to remove E1 from E1, E2, E3. I give it a a value, a coproduct value of E1, E2, E3, and I'll either get a result where it successfully extracted E1, which is the first case here, or I get a, f a failure to extract, so you get the rest of the coproduct. So you can see in the in, in rest 9, that thing there, um, we got it right, so we, we've, we failed to extract the, co the value E2 out of the coproduct we have. And you see the type is now E1 and E3, so we've successfully eliminated um, E2. So that's the core idea behind coproducts. What, what you can do with it is you can kind of add members and remove members. It's a bit like what the ZIO method talks about. You kind of want to be able to do that, um, you know, freely to remove and add things. So you can do many other things as well, but I don't have time to go through them. I wish I do. Um, using coproducts for error handling seems a bit cumbersome, right? You have this kind of massive pattern match, and you know, any newcomer comes in will run away screaming. So the question is, can we make it nicer? And I think we can, and that's why I made the library hot potato. <laughs> it's a, thank you, thank you a lot. Um, I, I was hoping for that effect. So it's a library for to aiming to, aiming to do type safe error handling in an ergonomic and readable way. So even if you're new to, you don't know any much about corporate, you need to do this whole function of programming stuff, then you can still really understand what's going on. It's based on shapeless coproducts, as I've been talking about, and it integrates with Zero and Cats quite nicely at the moment. Uh, first, I want to do a bit of simplification. So coproducts, as you can write it, it I feel like it's still quite noisy. Uh, my, you know, I have a hard time reading it. So. Uh, what Hot Potato provides is this type alias around coproducts for you to specify um, basically a coproduct, but in a nicer syntax. And you, know, you can say it's a one off E1, E2, E3. So you can read it, you, don't, you can understand what's going on. So I'll be using this in the rest of the talk. So let's start with uh, handling errors exhaustively. What you normally want to do with uh, handling errors exhaustively is you want to either handle them all into one type. For example, I want to change, um, handle all the errors into a user error message, for example. So in that case, you can use map error all into. Um, so every single thing starts with map, map error for ergonomic reasons. You can, 
you <coughs> type map error, you see the auto, auto complete suggestions. So that's the reasoning behind, behind the API design. Um, so in the first example, you see that the uh, Scala compiler actually asked me to pass in three functions, um, each handling one single case. Because Scala compiler can, can um, identify from you know, all the type machinery that there are <coughs> three possibilities in the, in the core product. Now the other thing you want to do a lot of time with exhaust handling is you want to convert from, from uh, multiple different errors into like a subset of errors. Um, one example where you do this is let's say you have a lower level, level interface with a lot of different errors and you have a higher level interface that's uh, nicer to use. <coughs> so what you do is you, you map all of these lower level errors into you know, higher level errors by converting. <coughs> So that's what I have in um, using map error all. So that still enforces exhaust handling. You'll see that um, I have x1 and x2 here, which represent the higher level error. And you see that error 1 and error 3 both converts to x1. But because <coughs> we have only x1 and x2 as possibilities, um, you see in the final co product, you have the two possibilities, not, not three. There's no, there's no uh, there's a uniqueness in the error. And they try to find out what the type is. So that's something Hot Potato provides as well. Now getting to the, the fun part, which is uh, partial error handling. Same thing if we, if we have some sort of I.O. That, that has three possible errors. I can handle what I can handle. And then anything I can't handle, I can pass it to the, the consumer of my, my method. So the example here is, I, let's say I, have, I can handle E1 and E2. So I pass in two functions to say how I can handle it. I'm going to turn E1 into a string and E2 into an int. And you see the final result is uh, string int or E3 as the error type. Um, yeah, quite cool is that IntelliJ recently at least can infer the types. So if I have, I don't specify any types, the IntelliJ can tell you, you know, what, what, it, what the types can be. So that's pretty good for ergonomics. Oftentimes, your error handling has side effects. You want to do some logging or recovery, or um, you may, may need to look up something to, to produce an error message. Then, in that case, we have, the, you know, we, have flat, we have map errors, right? We have, and then you also have the flat map error equivalent to do any sort of uh, side effects if you want to, to do that with error handling. Um, you can, you, this, I, what I showed here is partial handling with some side effects, but you, can, you have exhaustive handling with side effects as well. Similar API, um, similar patterns. Now, one, one issue I have when working with um, production apps is I have multiple different steps, and each step can return a different error. Um, they're oftentimes not part of the same seal traits, so you, you know, zero won't help you there either, with, or either won't help you. Um, it's quite cumbersome. You have to kind of either create a new seal trait or find a way to kind of combine them together. So what Hot Potato provides is an easier way to, to combine errors from multiple places, um, you know, types that you, own, you don't own as well, it's quite handy. So let's say I have two operations, they return different errors. Um, I can look at the type that errors and the possible errors and then say, all right, I know it's probably E1, E2, or E3. And I, right, what I'll do is I'll provide this embedder, so I create an embedder instance, which is just something to help the Scala compiler infer the type that it needs to kind of combine into. And then for each of my step, what I do is I call this embed error to, you can think of it as a left, left map, and then um, create, can combine the error. Seal traits are still cool for error handling, don't worry. Uh, you can convert freely between seal traits and core products and you can convert it back as well. Or if you have a bunch of errors, they all belong to throwable, let's say, you can call unify error to say, I don't care what they are, they're all throwable. Um, but be careful because in that, when you do that, you're throwing away error information. So in summary, um, here's a bit of comparison. Um, so Hot Potato is not really a replacement of Zero or E2T. They're, they're, more, um, they're more for, more like a, something you can use on top of of zero and either T for error handling. Uh, you see that uh, either T is a bit weaker on the type unification part when you have different error types. Zero is nicer, but you can't do open error unions and you can't do partial error handling. But with Hot Potato, you can do all of them 
and you only sacrifice a little bit of, um, you know, you have the little bit of thing you have to do with um, combining errors. So it's just the beginning. Uh, I have many things I want to do to make uh, error handling more ergonomic, faster, um, and more readable. So if you have any ideas that you want to uh, talk to me about, um, I'm always welcome. And if you have any use cases that you know that you've you've had at work before, and you think you know, wondering whether Popular can help solve this, I'd love to hear your use cases as well. Um, working on documentation, it's pretty good right now, but yeah, I'll keep keep working on it. Um, and the Git chat is there if you want to talk to talk to me. So that's it. Thank you.